Well, praise the Lord, and welcome back to Nightline. I am confident that uh, you were educated, encouraged, and enlightened the last hour of Nightline as we spent some good quality time, and I think had good conversation with David Rosendahl of uh, Ministry United. But as I said at the very early part of the program, uh, we're going to go from, <laughs> from hot mess to God's best. And in just a minute, I'm going to introduce our guest to you, uh, Leslie Spears, or Spees. And uh, we're going to dig quickly and deeply into that book. Remember, our scripture is from Psalm 3, 2 through 6. Just let me read verse 5, where the word says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Hey, I want to just say this. Come here a minute. I'm not a prophet or the son of a prophet, but I just believe in my heart that somebody needs to hear that word. The Lord will sustain you. Don't know what you're going through. Don't, don't know what you're in the middle of right now. But can I just promise you, God has been faithful he is omnipotent, and He will be gracious. Whatever you're in the middle of right now, if you know Christ as your Savior and Lord, He's in the middle of that situation with you. I promise you that on the authority of the Word of God. We're going to go now to Tim Hill as he sings. Ironically enough, He's in the midst. have you done to deserve all this? Why don't you just curse God and die? What advice for a man who had trusted God most of his life? But then Job speaks as he stands among his broken down domain in the midst of it all I shall stand and not fall and bless his name in the midst of it all in the midst of it all ever come when everyone bows their heads to cry and when man has done all that man can do and I'm left alone to die ah but even then when I'm surrounded by affliction's greatest pain, in the midst of it all, 
in the midst of it all I will stand and not fall and bless his name in the midst of it all in the midst of it all I found hope and it's a hope in Christ Jesus that not one time has ever let me fall. Jesus heard my call and by me stood tall and in Him I stand complete in the midst of it all. Well, praise the Lord. What a powerful, powerful message that there is in that song that He is in the midst of it all. You may be in the middle of a situation right now. Uh, we don't claim to have all the answers. To be totally honest with you, some days we don't have any of them. But we do have some promises from the Word of God that we believe are tried, tested, and true. And we can stand on those promises. If we could have the privilege of praying with you or praying for you and just believing the promises of God for you, we would consider that a privilege. Please call that number on the screen. Many have already done that this evening and will continue to do so. So thank you in advance for giving us that opportunity. Uh, we welcome to Nightline for the very first time this evening. Uh, from the lovely state, our sister state, North Carolina, Leslie Spees. Welcome to Night Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being here. And um, from Hot Mess to God's Best is your second book, right? That's correct. Your first book? It's Confessions of a Hot Mess for Mess to Message. And it's more of a devotional format. So it's 90 days of messages for the hot mess in you. Yeah. Well, I want to I wanna talk about your books, of course. But, uh, and, we, and we have uh, several options of ways that we could ask you questions. And, and you, you told me right before we went on there that we're going to need to dumb this down. Yes, you do. Not hardly. <laughs> not hardly. Not hardly. And this is not dumbing down, but this is just curiosity. And, and you have no idea what I'm going to ask I you, but, uh, but I'm going to ask you this. Tell me about Scooby-Doo and the Goodwill. Now say that again. <laughs> Tell me in, in the introduction okay. to your book, you, you said something about your stepdaughter. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, who, who, okay. who talked to you about that. Yes. And it just, it just kind of uh, struck a note with me uh -huh. because I shared with you that uh, my wife and I had recently downsized and moved in. And I went to Goodwill and Miracle Hill in the landfill so many times they thought that I'd moved in. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Sure. 
Well, I have been the one in my family that likes to clear stuff out and declutter a little bit. Now, that doesn't necessarily apply with my mind, as you'll see as we talk further, but um, my stepdaughter is still a little bit upset because there is a Scooby-Doo stuffed animal that she had. Now she's 24, but um, that disappeared and I may have accidentally taken it to Goodwill. <laughs> well, I, I know that you appreciate me bringing that up, and, and she appreciates it, and I, and I, and I didn't mean to, to open up any wounds. Oh, it's okay. But we've all <laughs> done that. Not a wound for me. <laughs> we, <laughs> we've all done that, that kind of thing before. But is, is it not interesting to me and to you, I think, probably as well, that a lot of times uh, we'll, we'll throw stuff away? Mm-hmm stuff outside, stuff underneath, we'll sweep, we'll clean. I'm, I'm, I'm married to a, a, a woman who um, is like that with mm -hmm. all due love and respect. Mm -hmm. But why is it, Leslie, that a lot of times the stuff that has caused clutter on the inside, we leave it alone? Yeah, I think um, sometimes it's a lack of self-awareness. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of times I think we just kind of go through life on autopilot and we don't think about all of the stuff that we've accumulated in our minds that's that's having a negative impact on our lives. Yeah. I heard many, many years ago Dr. Adrian Rogers make a statement. He said that most people have not even stopped to think about eternity they're just trying to make it through the rest of the day. Do you, do you think that just having so much on our mind has kept us from decluttering our minds? I, I think so, certainly. Yeah. Um, I think that, and one of the things I talk about in the book is that as we walk through life, um, we take on a lot of stuff that we weren't really meant to carry. And I think some of that mm. comes from fear, um, fear of failure, you know, fear of rejection. It also comes from just earthly experiences and we try to protect ourselves and we mm. accumulate all this stuff. And if we don't declutter it, when you get to be 50 something, it's gonna have a real negative impact on your life and mm. hold you back from the life that God wanted for you. Wow, wow. The acronym, hot mess. How, how did you come up with that? In, in fact, the whole book <laughs> was was did this and I'm not trying to be funny or nosy oh, or anything <laughs> else did this come out of a crisis or was this just a gradual process of 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 when the book just yeah. this is what I need to do no. how did that happen yeah very fair question um, so I think it's been about eight years ago now I was going through kind of a difficult period in my life so I was a new empty nest or I think my youngest was about to go off to school and just the whole anticipation of that um, and for those that have kids, you know, you pour so much of your life into them and that's a big life transition. Um, so my mind was crazy, yeah. uh, as it always has been, but it, uh, you know, goes a, a million miles a minute. Uh, I was in a job that wasn't necessarily healthy for me. And my daughter that was away at school was having some mental and emotional um, type problems. So all of that was kind of a perfect, perfect storm. Yeah. And I was just feeling like a hot mess in my life. At the same time, I was kind of feeling the nudge to write, which I had done some writing. Uh, my career has been in the human resources field. Yeah. Um, so as part of that, you know, I'd written some articles and proposals and white papers and things like that, but I had never considered writing a book or anything like that. Uh, but I kept feeling the nudge to write, so I started a blog and I called it Hot Mess to Message. Mm. Um, because of feeling like I was a hot mess and feeling led to share my mess to help other people with theirs. Um, and then after some amount of time, I had so many blog posts that I was like, hey, this could, this could be a book. Sure. And that's kind of when I put together the first book, which was more of a devotional. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. It is, it is so interesting to me that chapter by chapter, you make reference to these as strongholds, mm -hmm. and and I commend you for that because I think I think you're you're spot on with that. Those are strongholds. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the stronghold of rejection. Okay. Where can that potentially start in a person's life? Yeah, I think it's it starts very early. 
Um, a lot of times it starts from your parents. Um, it can start from other children. You know, there's just so many things in this world that make us feel rejected or less than. Um, and, you know, as I said, I think it starts pretty early on. Of course, it varies depending on the person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think a, a lot of these strongholds develop because we try to protect ourselves from rejection. Yeah, yeah. Codependency. Mm-hmm. Is, is, that, is that capable of, of cluttering? That's not something that, that my generation talked a lot about yeah. or thought a lot about, even though a lot of us were. Mm-hmm. But it's a reality, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think so, certainly. What is your recommendation for anybody who's wanting to declutter? Okay, well, I think, as I said, it starts with kind of an awareness that it's an issue uh, for you. And that comes from doing some self-exploration and a lot of prayer and being in the Word and identifying those things that are having a negative impact on you. So in the book, I talk about 12 of the most common strongholds. So just a few examples of those are like uh, feeling like you're not enough, mm -hmm. fear, oh, I call it the fearsome foursome. So fear, mm. stress, anxiety, and worry, mm. uh, comparison, negative mindsets, idolatry, uh, guilt, shame, all of those things are strongholds that can have a negative effect on our lives. There's, there's no doubt, no doubt about that. I, I just want to ask you, have you seen anybody who as a result of, of reading this book and, and beginning to look at it? Because I, I'm telling you, there's, it, it's, a, it's a colorful book and it's a, it's a catchy little title, but there's, sister, there's nothing dumb about this book. There's <laughs> nothing dumb about this book. Uh, this is serious, serious stuff. Getting rid of guilt and sorting out shame is has has anybody that you know of been able to start the process of decluttering as a result of this? I think so. I've received some messages from from folks that say that it's making a difference in their lives. I actually have just led a book study. Yeah. Um, and I know that, you know, I heard from some people that they identified some things that they didn't realize were having a negative impact on them that now they're aware and they're going to start working through some of that. Good deal. Good deal. We're going to go back to Tim Hill now as he sings a song that uh, he, he wrote many, many years ago. It's a great song with a great message and and God can take your mess and bring out a message. He can do that, as Leslie has already said. He's still in the fire. My mama read a story from the Bible long ago About Shadrach, Meshach, and Ola Bendigo How the wicked king commanded They be thrown into the flame Because they would not bow And then deny their father's name Mama said the king stood high Upon a balcony so tall And when he looked in He was shocked by all the things that he saw Cause he thought that he would find them Lying dead upon the ground but instead of three, he counted four up walking all around. Well, I said, Mom, wait just a minute. There's one thing that I must know. If three went in, three came out, then where'd the fourth man go? And I never will forget it. My mama danced across the floor. And these are the words I heard her say while shouting through the door. She said, he's still in the fire and he's walking in the flame. And he'll be there to help you when you call upon his name. And he can still deliver by his almighty power. While here below, it's good to know he's still in the fire. She said he's still in the fire. And he's walking in the flame. And he'll be there to help you when you call upon his name. 
And he can still deliver by his almighty power While here below it's good to know he's still in the fire While here below it's good to know he's still in the fire Oh now my friend you may be destined to face life's hottest flame But I'm glad that I can tell you through the power of Jesus' name Not one flame of fire will harm you You'll come through it and you'll tell Yesterday, today, forever God is still alive and he's well I know he's still in the fire And he's walking in the flame And he'll be there to help you When you call upon his name And he can still deliver by his almighty power While here below it's good to know he's still in the fire While here below it's good to know he's still You mentioned a moment ago, Leslie, that uh, you were going through a season and uh, one of your own children was uh, having some mental and emotional issues. Uh, mental health, thank God, is something that finally the church hopefully is, is looking at correctly and compassionately. Uh, what are some of the steps that we could take in our own lives to help other people? Or maybe to just just be there until mm -hmm. they could get somebody to really help them? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the things is showing empathy and being compassionate, loving, loving others, yeah. being there for them, um, you know, perhaps suggesting resources to help them. Um, you know, whether that be at the church, clergy, friends, support network, counseling, uh, whatever that is. Certainly if it is a situation where you're afraid they might be suicidal. Um, I love that they have the new, uh, and I can't remember the numbers, but there's a new, <laughs> there's a new suicide line that's easier to remember. Um, so, you know, things like that I think have been huge. And I, like you, I think it's great that the stigma is reduced and that yeah. now people are more comfortable seeking the help that they need. No no doubt. In the church and outside the church. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, no doubt about it. And you mentioned those resources and, and I would just respond to, to that as just simply saying all of the above mm -hmm. because you, you didn't miss a one, I don't think, in that, in that list. Um, again, this acronym of helping others to make every stronghold scarce. R love the play on words, but more than that, Leslie, this could be a small group Bible study. Uh -huh. I actually have one. Tell me about it. I, I developed it. At, it's not published, but I developed it to go along with the book, and it's on my website. So anybody who wants to purchase the book for small groups, there's actually, if you order the book from my website, there's actually a reduced rate for small groups, and the Bible study is there and available as well. And just go to your website, mm -hmm. which yes, is? LeslieSpees.com. LeslieSpees.com. And uh, is that the best way to get the book there? There's information can, on the screen. Yeah, you can get it there. You can get it at Amazon, really anywhere that books are sold. Good deal. Good deal. Are you are you planning to write any books in the future? Are you in the middle of that right now? Well, I think I have at least one, one more hot mess book in me. It's a trilogy. Um, huh. I'm getting better now. I'm probably lukewarm, maybe not so hot. But anyhow, I, I don't have that uh, on the real near horizon. I am working with a friend. I'm pretty passionate about well-being mm -hmm. and we are collaborating on working on a Bible study that's called Nourish um, Mind, Body, Soul, and Spirit. Um, so I'm excited about that. It'll be like a six-week study and you know has uh, faith-based. Good. And Good. 
When you say that, it makes mm -hmm. me think that uh, how often do we see one another, even at church? Mm -hmm. How you doing? Uh -huh. How you doing? You Great. just say fine. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we doing good. Doing yeah. good. When how are you in, really you know, doing? Yeah, how, how are you really doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the good shepherd is Jesus, and he cares about how we're doing. And as Christians, we should really care for one another. As different as the two guests and their ministries are, there have been so many similarities. And uh, even the, the books, the letters to the churches and then your book from hot mess to God's best, God really does want his best for our lives. And you've reminded us of that very, very well. I would like to uh, have the privilege, if I may, to just pray for you briefly. How could we pray for you as, as you move forward in, in your ministry? Um, I think just, just to lead and guide me in the way that he wants me to go. Let me do that. Father, I thank you for your leadership, your guidance, your direction, and your protection. And Lord, in my own life, I, I thank you for the correction. Oftentimes, I'm, I'm so prone to wander. I'm so susceptible to being distracted. And in my own mind, in my own life, to becoming a, a hot mess. But God, I pray that you might give me clarity so that I can better serve other people and so that I can even better pray for other people. And I do pray for my sister Leslie Spees. I pray, God, that you would continue to direct her, open doors for her, give, give her wisdom as she writes, and uh, give her the ability to do what you have called her to do. I thank you that you're looking for availability, and when you find availability in our lives, you are so faithful at doing above and beyond anything that any of us could ever ask or think. Thank you so much for being thank you. on Nightline, and thank you for being a part of this program. So until we meet again, God bless you a thousand times over, and good night in Jesus' name.